Welcome to this session on creating a custom data group annotation library and tag. So in this session, we'll create a custom tag for some of the data group annotations that automatically annotate elements in the model on the drawings, such as doors or spaces. Now, if you wish to customize these tags, then new cells need to be added to the annotation library. And I would suggest that you copy the annotation library that is delivered in the regional data set and place it in your company workspace or work set. Keep in mind, you can only point to one annotation library at a time. So we'll start by actually going out to Windows Explorer and copying that delivered cell library into our company workspace. I'm going to go to my C drive under Program Data, Bentley, Open Buildings, Connect Edition, go to the Configuration folder and under Data Sets, and I'm going to select the data set US, but you could select any of the regional data sets. And then there is a cell folder under there, and within that cell folder you'll find an annotation under bar DG for data group .cel. So I'm just going to right click and copy. Then I'm going to go back to my W drive under the CE configuration folder and under the workspaces and I'm going to select my XYZ workspace. So I'm going to set this up as a workspace standard. I'll open the standards folder and in this case we're going to put it in the cell folder. So I'm just going to now paste that same file there. That way I will have all the delivered cells which I, I've now copied, and then we can either customize those cells or we can add additional new cells. And just to clarify that this is my customized data set, I'm going to add my company initials or XYZ at the end of that. Now this is a case where we have actually moved the location of a library, and so we are going to make a change to our configuration so that we are pointing to that new library. As I said, you can only point to one annotation data group library at a time. So I'm actually going to make that change to the configuration in the work set configuration file. So I'll do it in the template, in the project template config, and that way every time I create a new project it will automatically be pointing to this workspace cell library. So I'm going to go back up to my XYZ workspace folder and under there I have a work sets folder and this is where I have the configurations for different work sets I might have in that particular workspace. As I said I'm going to make this change in the template so that any new projects will already have this modification. I'll go ahead and open up that configuration file. You can open it in any type of text editor I am using Notepad++. And there's a number of configurations set here at the work set level. And if I scroll down, there is a category for Bentley Building Annotation. See right here. And if I look through this list here, you can see there is a BB Annotation Cell Library configuration and I'm going to modify that line. Now that I have reset the configuration variable to look at the new library that I created, I'm going to reopen Open Building Designer and set my workspace and project. So I'm in the XYZ workspace and using the project template US here. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll just browse. And there's an empty.dgn file in my project template. And I'm just going to open that up. You can really open any file. We just want to make sure that it finds the correct library. So I'm going to go up to the drawing production tab. And on the Place Annotation group, I can pull down and select Manage Annotation Cells. Now you may get a mismatch alert since this is the first time you're opening this DGN library. 
in this particular work set, and you want to select Use the Active Workspace XYZ and the Active Work Set. And we'll go ahead now and open that up. So that's going to actually open our annotation data group XYZ, and it opens the dialog for managing the data group annotation cells. Now it shows you here the current library. You just want to confirm that it is the library you just created, the annotation DG XYZ cells. So if you've done the last step correctly, set the configuration, then you should have the correct library here. And we're simply going to create a new cell. You can see here, if I pull down this list here of annotation cells, there are a number of cells already in this library because we copied the delivered library. And we're going to create a new cell. So I'm just going to come up here, create new cell model. We'll use design from seed. We'll give this cell a name. Again, I'm going to prefix with the company initials so that users will know this is the company standard for space labels. We'll call it XYZ space label. And of course you could give it a description as well. I'm just going to use the same text. For annotation scale, you want to set that to full size. We want to be able to place this as a cell, so you want to select that option. No need to select the option uh, to place it as an annotation cell. The process of placing these data group annotations already does that. And in fact, if you check that, it will actually end up scaling it twice and not give you the result that you want. So once we have that set, we can just select OK. And we now have a new cell in our library, and we can go ahead and start adding the text fields that will make up that cell. So once I've created the cell, first thing I want to do is associate it to the right catalog type. So this indicates what type of element this cell would be used for. So I'm going to scroll down and find my space type. We're going to make a, a space label. And then that will list data group properties for the space catalog type. And I can place those as text fields to create the cell. And before doing that, I'm going to go ahead and, and rotate this to a top view. And I can see my ACS triad there that's at the 0, 0 origin. And that's going to be the, the origin of the cell. So I want to keep that in mind as I place text. I also want to perhaps use one of the text styles that I have set up so I can right click and, and activate a particular text style, then the, the text will be placed using that style. I also might want to make sure my active level is what I want it to be. So I'm going to use, again, a, a shortcut, which is Q1. That pulls up the attributes toolbox. And then I could select my active level. So for instance, I'm going to select GNO text, but you could have a level for instance for the room name or for the room number, and so forth, however you want to arrange your levels. So I've got the active level set, and then I simply select the data group information that I want. So for instance, I'm going to start with the label, and then the length would be the number of characters allowed. So I'm going to use 25. It is a text string. And then we simply are going to select place text. And you may have to zoom in a bit. This is going to place it, you know, at actual size, which is eighth inch text here. And I'm going to place it and then rearrange it because I, I need to change my placement point on my text there. But I could then select a second attribute such as the space number. Now that I might want to limit the characters. If you have a limit to the number of characters in your, in your room number, we could actually limit the characters here and place that. And if there was perhaps another piece of data that you wanted in that, in that space label, such as maybe an occupant count or an occupant type, you could place that as well. or perhaps the actual area. 
Now the actual area is actually a, a number, so we might want to control how that is placed. There is an area preferences preference, so you may just want to use that, and then the accuracy. So if I'm putting that in feet, I might want two decimal places on that, or if I don't want to be that accurate, I just want a round number, I could do that as well. And then select the place text, and that'll place our actual area. So I have each of those pieces of text in the file now, and I'm again just going to use my, my change text attributes to just change the justification. So perhaps on each of these I want to just use a center center. So we'll change them and then I can move them selecting and then maybe working off my origin. I could also add any line graphics that I wanted to the cell. I'm going to switch my display style here to wireframe. And, and we'll use the ellipse tool to place an ellipse around the, the area text. So I'm just going to select the center of the text and create an ellipse. And then when I'm done creating my cell, I'm simply going to select the close icon on the dialog and it's going to put me back into my working file. Now in the next session, we will actually set the new space annotation tag as the default label for our spaces. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.